In this video, we're going to start the process of creating the physical implementation of our circuit board. We've placed all the parts on the surface where we think we would like them, and now we're going to start creating the copper layers. In this video, we're going to look at how do we navigate all of these different layers and see the distinction between changing the viewing of the layers versus the active layer that we're focusing on that we're going to make changes in. And then we're going to add a polygon pore that is going to be our ground connections. And we're going to look at how we can still make a change in the schematic and have that pushed over to the layout. Here's the starting place to create the physical implementation of our circuit board. Now, before we get started, there's one thing I've learned in life. You can never save too many times. We've got our layout page over here, which is the PCB dock and that has the stack up information embedded in it. It has the constraint information embedded in it, and it has the position of the parts embedded in it. And each of these parts is still linked to the schematic that's part of this page, that's part of documents in the project. One of the things that we're gonna do at this point is just to kind of lock in where we've gotten to, let's save this layout under a new name so that if we ever make a mistake and we screw something up, we can always go back to this starting place. So we're going to highlight the PCB document, and then we're going to say Save As, and we're going to just give it a really simple name. This is going to be PCB2. This is our second edition. And we're going to say Save. And now, if you notice, look, here is PCB2. It's the same information that's here, same linkage to the schematic as well. You know, we saw earlier when we developed the stack up that there are a lot of layers even in a two layer board. The two layers only refers to the two copper layers, but we also have the overlay, which is the silk screen on the top and bottom. We have solder mask. We also have the outline layer, the keep out region of the board. To navigate each of these layers and to see them selectively, we can use the view configuration panel. If you don't have it up, Again, it's all under Panels. We go to View Configuration, and here is that panel. Now, I also have Properties on. I don't really need the Properties, so I'm actually going to come and turn off Properties. Here is View Configuration. And you'll notice that we have a number of options to view all of these selective layers. For now, I'm going to turn everything off so we can start with just the the blank screen, and then we'll selectively turn things on. So you notice the little eyeballs, this controls visibility. I'm going to turn all layers off, but there's still some things that are showing. And if I scroll down, I'll see, oh, here's another set of control system colors. I'm going to also deselect that one. Wow, nothing is there. And this is a good starting place because it's a way of always establishing starting from nothing and selectively turning on layers. Here are the signal layers. Here's the top signal layer. Here's the bottom. Of course, there's nothing on the bottom yet. Let's see. We also had the uh, keepout region. Here's the keepout region, and there it is along the perimeter. Uh, so we can selectively turn the different layers on. We're going to keep the system colors on because that's going to give us kind of the, the uh, ghost lines or the rat's nest routing. We're going to definitely use those. We can never go wrong turning everything on. That way we've got everything available to us, uh, unless it gets a little cluttered, and then we can be very selective and turn the, um, the various copper layers off and on as we need. Viewing the layers is different from being able to do something on those layers. To do something on a particular layer, that's called the focus layer or the layer that we're going to be paying attention to. The controls for that are down here. Don't confuse viewing a layer with focus on the layer or selecting a layer. These are the layer select controls. This just tells us which layers do we want to have visible on the bottom panel. And so we have all layers, everything. If we just have the signal layers, then we have just the top and the bottom. And it's by clicking on one or the other of these that gives us the focus and that's the layer that we can make changes on. The very first thing we're going to do before we start routing traces is we're going to add a copper pore to layer 2. So we're going to focus on layer 2. 
This is going to end up being our ground plane, which we're really going to learn to get in the habit of calling the return plane, because this is where the return currents are going to flow. We're going to want to use the entire bottom layer, layer 2, as our ground layer. And so we're going to create a polygon that's going to encompass the entire size of the board. So we're focusing on layer 2. We've clicked and highlighted it. We're on layer 2. We're going to go to place, because we're going to place a component, or we're going to place a polygon pore. And as soon as we do that, you notice, look, our cursor has changed. Now we're going to put the vertices of the copper pore, just to make it easy for ourselves, so that it's easy to do the alignment. We're going to change the grid size so that it's easy to add a copper pore for the whole bottom layer. And how do we change the grid? Remember, it's the letter G. We come along here, let's use 100 mils. And now you can see the grid lines even, 100 mils. Remember, it's 3.5 inches by 2 inches. So we're going to literally use the vertices of the board as the vertices for the polygon in which we're going to make ground. So we click on one vertices, vertex, we click on the next one, and you can see we're building up that rectangle in the bottom layer. Because again, remember, our focus is on the bottom layer. And we close the vertices. So now we've got a closed polygon. I don't want to add any more vertices, so I'm going to push um, uh, Escape. And Escape one more time to change our cursor. And now we've got that copper pour. Now if I click, it is not highlighted. We're seeing that bottom layer. And we have access. It's the active layer. If I turn that layer off, it's gone. We see the top layer. And now I can turn it on again, and I'll turn off the other layer. If I turn on all the signal layers, here are the signal layers. Here I have access to the uh, copper on the top layer. Here I have access to the copper on the bottom layer. Now, there's one other thing that we're going to want to do to this bottom layer. We're going to want to call it and connect it to the ground net. So I highlight, I, I make sure I'm... I am on the bottom layer, so that's my focus layer. I highlight it, and so now we can see it's changed color. It's highlighted, and now I want to pull up its properties pages so I can set this to the ground net. And so where's properties? Panel and properties. This is the general panel that controls the properties of every object in the database that is our project. So let's see. We're going to change that net, and um, we've highlighted it. It's a copper pour. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to change its net. Right now it's not defined. So we're going to pull down what nets can we use. Oh, here's ground. We're going to set it to ground. And now it is ground. Because we made a change to it, changed it to the net name, it's not poured anymore. And so you can see here, polygon not poured. And so we're given the very nice option here of re-pour. OK, let's re-pour it. And there we go. We're done. And again, if I, it's still highlighted. If I click off somewhere, it's not highlighted, and there's our copper plane that's, that's been poured. If we make changes and we add traces that go in here that aren't going to be ground, we're going to automatically, the tool is going to automatically create clearance holes for us. Um, if we make connections to it, if we make any kind of change, we may change the pour, the, where the copper is located, and periodically we may want to go back and re-pour that copper layer. While we're here on the bottom layer, let's take a look at the connector where we bring in power. And so I'm going to turn on the visibility for the top layer. Here's the top layer. There's the connector. And I'm going to zoom in in this region. Remember, in the connector, this is the power pin. These two are ground pins. But wait, they're not connected to the they're ground nets, as, as this one is, but they're not connected to the copper pour. What's going on? Let's take a look at the schematic and see if we can understand how come I don't have connectivity of these two pins to ground. So we turn on our schematic. Here is our connector. And we realize, uh-oh, I forgot to connect ground to this net. I connected pin 2 and 3 together. But I don't have ground over here. I screwed up. But that's OK, because now we've recognized that problem. We can fix it. I'm going to move the test point down a little bit, just so it's out of the way. 
And now I'm going to come along and I'm just going to reconnect this to ground. Remember how we do that in the schematic? We grab the power port, the ground power port, and we just connect it to that net. Now we've changed our schematic. We somehow want that change to be reflected into the layout. How do we do that? Really simply. All we do is, remember, when we pushed the schematic to the layout, we went to Design, and then we had the Update. And now we're going to update it to PCB2 because that's our new version of the layout. And so we're going to update to PCB2. And we get our engineering change orders. So here's what's going to happen. Well, we this was a previous net that was floating. We're not going to use that. So yep, we're going to remove it. And we're going to be connecting those two other terminals to ground. Um, and we're going to add uh, something to the layout. So these look reasonable. Let's validate the changes. Yep, they're going to be OK. There are no serious errors that have cropped up. We have to remember this is an engineering change order. So there's a formal process we go through to execute. So we're going to execute the changes. They're done. And we don't have any errors. We can show errors, no errors. That's great. Another successful operation. We close. And now we come back here. And now we see, wow, we have ground connections for uh, these um, holes. But you know, unfortunately, uh, I don't see them connected. We need to re-pour the copper to get them connected. And so if we do a copper pour, if we highlight, remember we change our focus to the bottom layer, we select the bottom layer, and we want to re-pour the copper to make the connection to those ground vias. We have a couple ways we can do that. We can go into properties and change re-pour, or we can right mouse click. We've highlighted the copper, the copper polygon. We've highlighted it, and now it's a polygon action. We come over here and say, hey, let's re-pour selected. And there we go. Here is one small problem. The problem is this hole is where we're going to put the connector. It's going to the plane. That's what we want. The connectivity is correct. But when we solder to it, this pin is now connected to this huge copper plane. And that large copper plane is going to suck the heat out of that pin. It's going to make it really hard to solder to it. So what we really want to do is add a thermal via to the via that the pin is going to go through. So we're going to turn this into a relief via. We click and highlight it. Come over to Properties window. Here are the properties for this specific object that I've highlighted. And we can read through the, some of the details of what's listed for that part, that via. Yep, it's connected to the ground net. That's great. We got the two layers. Yeah, all this looks good. Nice little picture of it. Uh, ah, and here is the thermal relief. So we want to turn this into a thermal relief via. So we click the box. And now we can look at the details. This is what Direct Connect looks like. This is what the relief looks like. And we have the ability to change the features. And the 10 mil features is fine. Uh, the air gap of 10 mils, that's fine too. There's nothing special that we want here. That's enough of a gap here uh, in order to provide the thermal disconnect so that we'll be able to solder that pin OK. Uh, so we say OK. and. Um, uh, we're done. We've set that via as a thermal relief. While we're here, let's do the other one as a thermal relief. So we've highlighted it. We'll go back. We'll do exactly the same thing. Here is thermal relief. Uh, we already have the parameter set for what we want, but we'll just check and verify that when we use thermal relief, the parameters are, yep, 10 mil wide traces of one square, basically connecting the two for uh, for, for legs in that thermal relief. And so we're done. And now you say, well, wait a minute. That doesn't look like a thermal relief via. That's because the change is going to appear in the copper pour, but we can't see that because we have the old copper pour there. We need to update the copper pour. So we're on layer two. That's our focus. We click and highlight that uh, copper pour region, and we right mouse click, and we say, OK, let's, it's a polygon action. Let's re-pour. We only have one copper pour here. We can do selected or all. We'll do selected. And presto, there is our thermal relief vias for these two. Before we move on to routing, let's take a look at one interesting feature here.
Remember, we created the copper pour by using the vertices of the board. We switched to the 100 mil grid, which we're still on. And we used the vertices of the edge of the board in order to create the, uh, the polygon in which we poured. But look, we have a gap over here. Why do we have a gap? How come copper didn't go to the edge of the board? Let's turn on visibility so we can see the keep out region on the board. So we come over here to view configuration. And uh, let's see, we want to see the keep out region. Where is that? That's down here. Here it is. And so here's the keep out region. And you notice that the keep out region, it's 20 mils wide, centered at the edge of the board. So we have a 10 mil keep out region on this side and the other side. So when the vendor comes along and uses the milling machine, it's going to cut along the center line of that. And that gives us that 10 mil of clearance uh, where the drill bit may wander a little bit. So we want to stay out of that region. But you notice that the edge of the copper port didn't go to the edge of the keep out region. There's a gap between them. How big is that gap? And if you look closely, you can see that we have a 10 mil overlap of the keep out region and the edge of the board. And look, we have that same distance over here. Because remember, when we set up the constraints for the copper layers, we said we don't want to have a copper any closer than 10 mils to any other object. And the keep out region is an object. And so our constraint has limited us to the 10 mil uh, distance to the nearest object. And that was taken into account when we did the copper pour. Now we're ready to move on to start the routing process for all of those pads on the top layer.